All right. How about how about if I go ahead and do my little spiel? If anybody misses it, it'll be okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey everybody, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Liberty and I'm a member of the Firestorm Collective. And this afternoon we're joined by Liberation Tarot organizer Alicia Epstein and essay contributor Lawrence Fariner II uh, to explore tarot and the role that it can play in our healing and social change. So if you haven't been to one of our events before, uh, I'll fill you in that Firestorm is a 16-year-old radical bookstore owned and operated by a queer feminist collective in Southern Appalachia on the land of the Cherokee people. Um, we strive to feature books and events um, that reflect our interests and the needs of marginalized communities in the South. Uh, and we're continuing to do um, a fair number of events online. Um, we're doing that both because it's great to be able to connect with folks uh, like y'all at a distance, and also because we know that for a lot of folks, um, virtual is still a lot more accessible. So we've got some exciting events coming up um, over the next month that are online if you're interested, including um, an upcoming conversation with contributors to Rattling the Cages and The Warehouse, a visual primer on mass incarceration. So definitely check that one out. Um, and you can look at our full calendar of events or follow us on social media or get our monthly newsletter and you'll hear more about things like tonight. Um, so today we are doing this event on Zoom. Um, and uh, if you haven't used Zoom so, so, so much, <laughs> there is a Q&A tool available that you can use. Um, if you're on a computer, I think it's at the bottom. Uh, it's a little icon with two speech bubbles. I think on a phone, it might be at the top of your screen. And it's a place where you can write out questions for Alicia and Lawrence. Um, and it'll help us keep track of those questions as we go. We definitely welcome you to write those questions early or whenever it comes to mind. Um, there's also an open chat uh, and you should feel free to make use of that. But if you put questions there for us, um, they might get lost. So just uh, use that Q&A tool um, uh, if you can. Uh, all right, and I'm gonna go ahead and introduce uh, introduce our guests. So today we're here with Alicia Epstein, uh, who is a seminomatic interdisciplinary artist and organizer. Their creative inquiries manifest conceptually and promiscuously across a broad range of media, including sculpture, installation, uh, photo, video, performance, publication, printmaking, collage, and cross-media collaborations. Um, we also have Lawrence Barriner II, who's a queer uh, Black coach, facilitator, and liberation worker who most values love, justice, community, and transformation. His unpaid work includes visionary fiction, revolutionary uncling, community-focused healing, and creating post-patriarchal futures. Um, I would also welcome everyone who's here uh, to introduce yourself in the chat. Um, we'd love to know a little bit more about you as well. Um, and on that note, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pass it off to our guests. Alicia, Lawrence, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you, Liberty. That was a great introduction. Um, and thank you all for joining us today. This is so exciting. Um, it's our first virtual event for the tarot deck. We've done a few in person, but it's really special to get to um, do, as Liberty said, like a wider reach that is a bit more accessible, um, especially along with Firestorm. Um, so to just introduce myself again, my name is Alicia. I'm an artist I'm originally from Massachusetts. I am calling in right now from Montreal, where um, I am currently in a visa process trying to relocate to Montreal, which is exciting. And um, yeah, I am um, a recent MFA grad from the Tyler School of Art and Architecture where I studied sculpture and um, have been working on developing my studio practice and teaching since then alongside uh, launching this tarot deck. And I will pass it to Lawrence to introduce himself. Thanks, Alicia. Um, I'm also putting in the chat part of um, Liberty's prompt. We'd love for folks to introduce yourselves, yourselves in, in the chat and also answer our little icebreaker question. How old were you when you first encountered tarot? 
Um, and yes, I'll say a little more about myself. I am uh, located on Massachusetts Pawtucket lands in Cambridge, Massachusetts, where I've lived since 2007. Um, and I grew up in the U.S. South. I am grateful to have family there, but to not be there myself right now. Um, and yeah, I'm so excited to have been a part of this tarot deck. I'm yeah really looking forward to the conversation and what folks share. Um, and I know there's at least one question from someone in the audience who I heard about yesterday. So when we get to Q&A time, we'd love to hear that and also hear whatever else comes up. Um, yeah, I think that's all. Maybe that, that's all I'll say about myself, but Alicia, should, should we like also summon a Met as a, maybe yeah. Adrian, <clears throat> two other key figures in the. We should summon a Met wherever they are right now. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Amet Azel is the incredible poet who wrote the card descriptions for all the cards that are in the booklet and also was just a major co-collaborator in general on the deck uh, leading up to its publication. And I met Lawrence through Amet, who I met, um, who I met in the West Bank um, in Palestine in 2020. And um, yeah, they've been a big inspiration and great co-conspirator along with the project. So yes, Amet, we're summoning you, who is currently probably in Berlin at this moment. Met is currently in Berlin or maybe who knows? In who trip. Knows? <laughs> they're, they're quite nomadic as well. There's a lot of weekend trips that happen when you can travel around Europe for not that much money and not that much time. That's um, um, so I will give a bit of an event rundown, but um, while I'm doing that, again, as Lauren said, feel free to write in the chat your answer to the question. How old were you when you first encountered tarot? If it has a story to it and you feel like sharing that as well, that's great. I love hearing um, introduction to tarot stories. But um, as for the event rundown, I will mention that you will notice that we are recording this event, um, although there will be a section later on that we will be discarding the recording for. So um, you won't need to worry about that if you are sharing anything more personal in the later half of the event. Um, so to begin with, we will be sort of just delving into what is tarot? and what is liberation? Um, and those will be um, conversations that we can have over the open chat as well. Um, so once we get into that, if folks have, you know, like history they wanna share, insights, um, thoughts, that will be a space to do it. Um, I will go into a bit of the history of the Liberation Tarot deck as a project, how I came up with it, what the process was like, um, and Throughout all of this, any questions and answers or any questions, feel free to put them um, in the chat. We might start a question and answer function. We'll see how that goes. Um, but in any case, I'm happy to answer questions as we go along. And then we are gonna take some time to practice using the deck um, as a ritual community. Um, I will lead a little grounding meditation and then um, Lawrence will be pulling a card that we're going to be using as um, a journal prompt. So folks will take some time and we'll take maybe like five to seven minutes and you can use that card as a journal prompt. That said, if you have um, the Liberation Tarot deck on your own in your own house, feel free to pull your own card for your own prompt. Um, you know, you can pick and choose whichever one you want to use. Um, and then Lawrence and I will share a bit about um, just where we're seeing the deck in the world and how we're already seeing it move through spaces. Um, and ooh, before that, sorry, we're gonna ref we'll reflect on the journaling in case anything uh, fruitful came up from that or also just sort of what that was like as a process. Um, and that is the section that you don't need to worry about the recording, we'll be discarding that recording. Um, and then Liberty will be sort of closing us out. So, um, that's our plan. That's our agenda. We're excited. Hope you're excited. <laughs> um, but before we go in, maybe let's just look at some of these um, comments just to see, looking through where folks started to get introduced to tarot. Okay, 15 or 16 years old. Oh my gosh, someone is from Copenhagen. Welcome.
Yeah, I see. That person, Trine or Trine, um, sorry for any mispronunciations, got their deck when they were, their first deck when they were 21, and now it's 19 years later, an entire half a lifetime or almost half a lifetime. That's cool. Um, Nadia, hi Nadia, who's a friend of mine, um, got their first deck at 15 or 16, the Rider Weight deck. Oh, so Lane, you, it sounds like Lane and their friend bought each other decks because of the, the superstitions that you can't buy your own deck. I've heard this from so many people who are like, I would love to get the Liberation Terror deck, but I can't get it for myself. And I think it's so interesting because I never really ascribed to that myself. Um, like, you know, the lore that you like always have to be given a deck. I don't know, Lawrence, do you have thoughts around that? I mean, I just know that that's for sure like a particular, there's a lineage of tarot practitioners that believes that and there are just like many lineages of tarot so i think that if that lineage feels like it resonates with you don't buy a deck <laughs> yeah if that lineage doesn't resonate with you you should buy a deck um that's guess, my yeah have you bought decks for yourself i've bought so many decks <laughs> <laughs> i have like two just here like on my desk like yeah what um just out of curiosity what are the what are the two tarot decks you have on your desk like what are you working with um well they're actually more like oracle decks one is the Ch is cheney nicholas's um uh deck of plenty wow and this one is an enchanted foraging deck oh gorgeous um but i also have like more traditional tarot decks like the wild unknown tarot deck i have the hoodoo tarot deck it's a um yeah spiritually based deck i have uh oh my gosh now i'm forgetting but i have a bunch <laughs> yeah um that's awesome yeah i we're living in a time of we're luckily in the time of a plethora of beautiful decks that are happening yeah. um which maybe brings us to the question around like what is tarot especially what is it today when there's so many different types of decks um this is another question that if folks want to um, you know, pipe in in the chat, please absolutely do. Um, I don't want to position myself in any way as a historian of tarot because I am not. Um, but it's, yeah, something that I've definitely learned a lot about through this project and um, has such a multifaceted history. And um, as we say in the booklet, and it's good to reiterate here, so much of modern day tarot was stewarded by the Roma people. And so as a general acknowledgement, I want to acknowledge the contribution of the Roma people for stewarding the current day practice um, of tarot, at least uh, largely how we use it now. And um, yeah, they lay thanks to the, what people think is probably like European, but then there's also some like questions around places in Egypt that there was pictorial cards used. Um, so the traditions of divination around imagery and card making and the, the vast, like, diversity of what that has looked like historically. Or, Great answer. Yeah, what do you, what do you, uh, what do you think about what is tarot versus Oracle deck, for instance? Yeah, I mean, I guess I have a much less... His like grounded in history response, <laughs> although I don't think that necessarily makes it less valid. But I really appreciate some of the like historical pieces you br bring in. Um, I think in general, for me, like tarot is a way to make meaning in the world. It's like a way that I, the person I learned tarot from is named Jax, and Jax taught me that tarot is like an intuitive practice that surfaces helps you look at what you already know or what already exists what's already true um and so it is kind of a different lineage or it could be seen as a different lineage than like tarot as like divination which is like seeing things that either some divination is like about future telling um and some divination is about like what's happening but i definitely think of it as like an intuitive practice to help surface what's already true um and 
in my experience, it's like often shit that's true that I don't want to look at. <laughs> Asking an answer to a question that like I really know the answer to, but I needed someone else to just like tell me. Uh, <laughs> or like tell me in language I was ready. I wasn't actually ready to hear, but when I hear it, it like starts to get me ready to deal with the thing. Um, so I think about tarot as that, like intuitive practice to look at what is. Um, and the line for me between tarot and oracle decks or any other types of decks is just like yeah tarot sort of like has a particular structure mainly has like major arcana minor arcana and those two pieces of the deck are like aimed at different kind of like levels of reality like the major arcana i think of is oriented around kind of like big energy like um like sometimes i think about it as like uh like things in the stars versus things like on the earth or like things in like multiple year arcs of my life versus like things are happening today or tomorrow um and that you know totally changes depending on what type of reading i'm doing and whatnot but i think about like tarot as like a deck of cards that kind of has that shape to it and oracle decks are just kind of like oriented pretty differently around like a particular theme and they're not like rooted on like the 78 card rider weight structure or anything mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah I would say I am on this very similar page and I love the difference that you describe between future telling and present telling and I feel like so many people I talk to who are don't have a tarot practice um think think of it solely as um a future a fortune telling like okay what you know when will I get married to who like sort of you know just like <laughs> how many kids am I gonna have yeah. and um I do find it so much more useful as a present telling um tool for like hey can you leave me a story of what this situation is what this conflict is that I'm having with this person can you send it back to me in different words as you said like words that I wasn't going to use for it maybe like hopefully I'm ready to hear uh, <laughs> or like <laughs> and some useful reframe um for a situation or a useful like descriptor or story for what is happening and um I also think it was yeah I appreciate the delineation between the major and the minor, minor arcana while you were talking I just had this thought which is in the tarot to astrology like relationship do you think the minor arcana are more like the inner planets like we got like the sun mercury moon and then the major arcana are more like that you know it's like you're doing a pluto transit it's a two-year transit of your life that's a major arcana yeah i just had that thought, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great thought. i love that thought yeah that um, feels like a great um new frame that i we'll probably play with because right like the inner planets like move fast yes so those things those homies are changing like all the time right the outer planets and especially the really far outer planets are like generational like right pluto transits like every 30 years or something so it's like that like pluto is going to be in the same sign for an entire generation of people like yeah big slow heavy thing compared to like mercury or venus which is like flying around right this makes me want to look into what the thoth tarot has to say about this just because of thoughts like that deck in particular is so intermingled with astrology so i'm curious if there's already thoughts around that um if in the chat uses thoth <laughs> yeah Please. Thoth is like a whole other world. You have, it's like, you have like the Rider Waite Smith folks and then the Thoth folks and then like the like, the folks who, the bilingual folks who I really work with both. Um, but I really feel like it's two different like classics camps that people find themselves in. Yeah. Um, if other folks have other thoughts around, you know, what Terra is, what it isn't, please put it in the chat. But I also think we can talk a little bit about our other big question what is liberation um and this is one i actually would really love to put the prompt in the chat of um folks who feel open to just putting in like what is liberation to you what does that what does that mean um you can use an example you can use um 
you know, like your more standard definition. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna write that in. You can do it. You're on, a, you're on a little iPad. Mobile device. Thank you. Got it. Do you want to wait till people respond and then answer, or should we answer first? Um, I would. I think we can. I think we can go and answer and see what folks. Um, yeah, what folks respond to. But right. it, I'm just giving. Oh, sorry, I am putting the prompt in the wrong place. Oh, <laughs> can you okay. see it now? There we go. Nice. Um, I'm, I'm just going to take like 10 seconds and just think if my answer has changed since the last time I thought about this question. Great. Um, because at every event that we've done for the tarot deck, this has come up in some form. And so it's actually given me a chance to delve into this. And I feel like um, like your essay for the booklet is honestly such, it's like a roadmap for me sometimes, Lawrence. Like I love rereading it because there's so, like you just pull from so many different places and there's a lot, there's so much like synthesis that you're doing in that essay. Mm -hmm. But um, Lately, so I, my usual first thought is like the, um, the Robin Wall camera quote of like all flourishing is mutual. Um, like the mutual flourishing as a form of liberation, which is that the mutuality is not separate to the flourishing, but instead is like an inherent aspect of it is like inseparable from the flourishing. Mm -hmm. um, and lately I've just been thinking about like safety too and like liberation is safety it's like being safe maybe and what I mean that looks like so many different things right now but also just considering all of the violence that's happening around the world now slash always but um yeah what like I think someone put this in the chat too Valerie yeah freedom from oppression coercion etc um and freedom to do yeah interesting Mm -hmm. what yeah what thoughts do you have Lawrence yeah I mean I feel I didn't know that you'd think about the essay like that so wow trying not to be overwhelmed <laughs> um thank you for sharing that and I also look back at it like a funny thing about my writing my practice of writing is that I write stuff down and then I forget about it immediately <laughs> so it's really nice to have written it down and be like what did I say about that thing um I'm actually like this is not a promotion moment, but I'm working on my first book and I wrote it. It's like from ages 21 to 28 and like editing it now when I'm 35, I'm like, wow, I really thought that thing 14 years ago and I totally forgot it. Um, yeah, super wild. Anyway, so having that definition in the book that I carry in my backpack all the time is really fucking helpful. Um, and it definitely, my, the first definition in the essay still feels true. The act of being in choice while remembering that everything is connected. Um, and the second definition, joy untouched by fear, really resonates with stuff other folks have said in the chat just now. Um, and after writing the essay, I think, I kind of wish I'd put a sentence in there that was like, also, these are kind of the same thing, like as a practicing Buddhist, like I think I learned that, um, or I root in the belief that everything is connected. And so particularly um, in the Zen Buddhist tradition that I practice in, like they're like, because everything is connected, like death and life are like the same thing 
So like, I am my father, who is my child, who is my grandmother, who is the tree, who is the sun, who is the earth, who is the rocks, who is, who is the water, you know? And so like, things are kind of like rising and falling all the time. But um, if you can like really understand that like everything is connected and things are living and dying and being birthed and transforming all the time, like there actually isn't a reason to be afraid. And so you can be really if you can access joy in that context, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Anyways, okay. There's like more to say there. I could articulate it more clearly, but yeah, I really still think those two things really resonate with me. Mm -hmm. And now I want to get to this chat. Yeah, there's so many good things in here. So juicy. So Nadia's saying one aspect of liberation is living without fear, or living in safety, peace of mind. Think, yeah, safety kind of in like a couple of different dimensions, physical safety, mental safety, like inner outer kind of um, tracks there. That's like also another definition of between the major and minor arcana. Um, someone taught me one time to like write the major arcana is like outer world things and minor arcana is like inner world things. Anyways, um, Valerie saying you have freedom to do, freedom from. Lane, I think being attuned to the present also makes the future more predictable, especially politically. You see historical patterns repeat themselves. Yes. If you're aware of seeing fascism growing in its earliest stages, you know where it's going. So I don't see a hard line between present telling and future telling. That's so interesting and true. Oh, so good. <laughs> and then Liberty says, I'm always obsessed with this Emma Goldman quote, which I think gets at liberation. Quote, I want freedom. The right to self-expression, everybody's right to beautiful, radiant things. I would live it in spite of the whole world, prisons, persecution, everything. Yes, even in spite of the condemnation of my own closest comrades, I would live my beautiful ideal. Wow, that's a good one. <laughs> mm. Nice. Yeah, I really... Um... I was talking with somebody the other day about is our freedom I guess it was a different topic we're talking about happiness I think that feels different it's adjacent but I think I'm gonna hold that thought actually hmm. um well folks feel free to keep posting um and keep using the chat too just like for thoughts or questions as they come up um I am going to share a little bit about the history of the project. Um, I was just telling Liberty and Lawrence that even though I do this quite often, sometimes I'll forget the major aspects of the project. So, if, you know, if you're interested in something that I'm not bringing up, just put it in the chat um, and I'm happy to expand on things. Um, and then we can go into practice using the deck, which will be very exciting. So um, a bit about the process. I started working on this deck in the spring of 2019. I came up with the idea when I was um, on an artist residency in Mexico City. And um, I put this in my introduction, but I had this really weird, I had a really weird little meditation that I did. Like weird because it hadn't happened to me like this before, but I was in Chapultepec Park and I was just like meditating. And I felt like these little like pieces of paper were like floating around me and I just like picked one out of the air. And it was like, oh, collaborative liberation oriented tarot deck. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I do want to work on that. Um, I was like, I don't think it's going to really happen. Or this was the think? meditation. Yeah, this was in the meditation. Okay. This it was just I've never I've never that's never really happened before necessarily like that. But I was like, I think this is going to take me longer than the six week residency. <laughs> and then. Um, fast forward five years and here we are <laughs> so it was much bigger project than I first realized uh, but I started by reaching out to some of my my closest collaborators and friends my schemers and um, did what I've done with other projects before which is I kind of pick people I have like art crushes on um, people whose work I really admire and who I really think should be part of the conversation and I started reaching out to them um, you know, some of the earliest folks were Edgar Fabian Frias, who um, did the mutant card, 
and Jennifer Moon, who did the World Card, um, Scarlett Tunkel, who did Portals, um, and slowly those folks introduced me to other folks, and um, this was all like very early COVID as well. But we I started bringing on people to the project, and it was very under structured for a very long time. Um, and it took us a while to, through video chats and Google polls, um, hone down that we were going to reinvent the suits, that we were going to reinvent some of the major arcana. And we ended up having um, just a bunch of polls and um, conversations about what what needed to be, what was asking for a revision, what was asking for like a reinvention. Um, you know, one of the early ones I can think of is like, for instance, like the justice card is now accountability. And so what does the change, we wanted to know like, what does the change in that language do to the way that card will land for someone when they pick it up? Are there more possibilities that people can enter into getting that card as opposed to a justice card? And then also just um, taking cards out of maybe their traditional um association so for example renaming page knight king and queen and coming up with cards that were non-hierarchical or you know beyond gender binary etc and allowing different access points and saying like what does this do for our ability to articulate the world that we are currently in and also envision the world that we want to be a part of and how do we make a tool that can more sharply do both of those things. Um, mm. So I feel like those questions were really what what grounded us as a collective through the process. Um, and then um, fast forward a few years of a lot of art making, um, we were in conversations with PM Press um, about the deck. And after we had all of our material, um, they, yeah, agreed to work with us. And at this point, um, Lawrence, I don't know when it is that you sort of joined in things. Like, I don't know what year that was, but you came in maybe shortly after Annette did um, when I reached out to Annette about doing the card descriptions. And that was a really incredible point in the project as well, because Annette was working off of a lot of the images for their words and also um, because of our like amorphous revision process, some people were able to then take those words and then revise their images based on off of it. So there was like a really interesting asynchronous collaboration that I feel like it was able to happen for some of the cards, um, which was really cool. And I, I, I wish that that could have happened indefinitely in some ways, but um, that's just my watery creative unbounded practice of non-structure um, which is another thing which is that I learned that my watery uh, creative unbounded unstructured uh, way of leading things only works for some people <laughs> and I have um, myself I will just reflect on that this this whole deck has been a really interesting learning process for me in terms of what um, spaces need what amount of structure to to thrive and um, how much, how to balance sort of flexibility with structure, especially when trying to steward a space of collective decision-making um, or collective creation, uh, which I don't have an answer for. I just know that I, I feel like that has, that question has wrung me out like a sponge for five years. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, Yes, yeah, so that I would say that's that's the um, a bit about the process of the tarot deck. Again, feel free to um, ask any specific questions if you have any um, that have come up for you around that, and um, you can do that now or just, you know throughout the event. If you have other questions, you can feel free to message me or the or the chat group. Um, but Lawrence, I would love for you to if you have anything to add about. I don't know your experience with the process or your your witnessing of the history of its evolution. Yeah, I think the things I would add, well, also just for folks who are 
on computers and watching. I'm working on some like mala beads via like rope. So mm -hmm. it helps me keep my body. It helps me keep my mind here by doing a thing with my hands. Fidget stuff is like not news to anybody, but this is just like what's happening over here. Um, it, yeah, so I definitely remember getting a call or text from a Met being like, I'm working on this tarot deck and I think you should do some writing for it. Um, I was like, that sounds cool. Me and Matt met um, on the train in Boston randomly, like didn't know each other. Um, I think I was actually reading Braiding Sweetgrass and a Met like came over and was like, you're reading that book. I think we should be friends. Wow. That's like a slight simplification of the story. Um, it, it also involved holding hands, reading poetry, with, or Emmett was reciting poetry to me um, as we held hands on the train platform with our eyes closed. <laughs> it's very magical. Um, anyways, our friendship has like always been very magical, and we use tarot many different moments during our friendship. Um, and so, yeah, when they reached out for me to do some writing for tarot project they're working on I was like that sounds great um and they were like the other essayist is Adrian and I was like what <laughs> <laughs> wild I will first I was definitely already in I was like whoa I really want to know what Adrian has to say about tarot now um so also summoning in Adrian Marie Brown who is the other essayist in the book um I feel like at this point Adrian doesn't really need that much of an introduction um so you know, she's a writer and a facilitator and a change maker and a visionary and a black feminist. Um, but I was grateful, kind of the thing you were just talking about with the cards and the descriptions, like I was able to read Adrian's essay before I finished the edits on mine. And so that was like really helpful. Um, and for sure, I find Adrian's writing inspiring and a lot of the way I wrote my essay is like in the style that she and lots of other people use the like here's a couple sentences here's a quote here's the sentences that that quote takes the first sentences and like slings them into and like that that style um bringing in the like lots of people have said the things already what's interesting is like how do we thread the things together um so that is a little bit about the how I came in in the essay part and I will just say plus one to some of the conversations that you named or some of the experiences I saw, some conversations that were having, that were happening around, is there enough structure yet for this thing to uh, move forward? Like being in long, long stretches of like just slow work and then like some stretches of like okay this thing is urgent now we have to move this little piece <laughs> before this deadline um oh shit we missed the deadline <laughs> did we miss the deadline i just feel like the there were like multiple moments of like we want x, you saying like we want x thing to be done by this date and then um, the day yeah. with like not like big important project deadlines but like yeah. the boat has to ship with the stuff soon. Like that was like, we can't miss those deadlines, but like the drafts of the things and the edits on the stuff, just like, anyways, um, I really appreciate your naming of the water as it relates to your own learning journey. And um, I think last thing I'll say is that um, someone read a quote in a meeting the other day that like water, like water grinds down mountains mm. it might take a long time mm -hmm. and it's like yeah water <laughs> water is powerful in its way um, definitely but it needs some earth to like contain or like shape i mean everything every time i'm like thinking about the foil or what the remedy is i'm like oh it's the earth i'm like oh make a list make that what <laughs> come up with clarity yeah. <laughs> yep. um but thank you for sharing yeah um oh wait can i say one more thing yeah please i meant to be very explicit i was a person missing deadlines 
<laughs> it would be like the essays are due at this date. <laughs> I would just like a week later be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I haven't finished the edits yet. Um so to be if like, it's helpful, I don't I don't remember that. So it's like right. <laughs> <laughs> right. I held a catastrophic amount of like, oh my god, I'm holding up this whole thing. And, <laughs> um okay, so no questions. I love that people are really fully um satisfied with our <laughs> narrative historicization of the deck. Um, but again, if you become unsatisfied and you have questions, feel free to put them in there. Um, so now's a special time when we can practice using the deck. Um, I am curious how many folks here, if you want to put in the chat, no pressure, but if you have a deck of your own, I'm just curious how many folks already have one. Um, I have mine with me right here, which is great. And... Um, if you have yours, you know, feel free to go and grab it, but you do not necessarily need it for this exercise. So if you don't have one or you don't have it near you, don't worry at all. Um, I'm going to lead us in a short grounding meditation. Um, oh, we have a question. Oh my gosh, we have a question from Nadia. Um, okay, before the short grounding meditation let me just take a look at this question did all the artists who contributed get to decide their own concept or was it a collective process for each card um so it was basically it was a mix of those things um we had a group of artists who were interested in the some artists were just like assign me my card let me know what i have to do give me the deadline i'm good with that and some artists were a bit more interested in the who what where when and like how we were going to reshape it so the artists who were interested in that aspect of the project we created the list of cards that we were going to create and also really short summary descriptions of what they meant if they were different from the original card for example um like the pool in our deck is the same as like the pool in the traditional deck the artist is the equivalent to the magician, but like its meaning has changed slightly. It's very similar to the magician, but so we sort of thought about just like, how does that change? And then um, when I, when artists either picked the cards that they wanted to work on, or I reached out to them saying like, hey, we have this one card that still needs an artist. Um, then we would sort of discuss, oh, I'm gonna laugh. that's not artist, thanks. Um, <laughs> we would, um, go back and forth a bit on what the concept was and um yeah what if artists were envisioning it different from the way that the group had sort of laid it out yeah so um okay yeah lane just to shout you out too i met lane um at our baltimore event because they helped organize it and host it at red emma's which was a very sweet time um, and this was a really fun event where we, um, speaking of like learning how to use this deck in spaces, we broke up into small groups and did small group readings with each other. Um, I agree, Red Emma's is the best. It was a really fun spot. Mm -hmm. um, and I had never done, I had never done tarot like this before with like five strangers in a small group where we, what we did in our small group is we came up with a prompt that, and I think our prompt was like, what are you what is your unique skill that you are being that you can offer sort of to like movement and revolution and liberation right now and we each picked a card from the deck and um what made it so fun to me was like people I didn't know were like offering we were like offering each other feedback and thoughts around the card not only sort of like our own midrashes around the card but also I remember someone who was like a social worker in the space got like a card of like support and understanding or something people were like you already have that vibe like you know to this person they were like you already inhabit this space of support and there was like so much affirmation that was happening in this little group it was very sweet um but it made me think that yes as, as a prompt for how you you know are being invited to show up in space this deck is really helpful and also it's a helpful facilitator of like small groups and um I've also we've also done large group readings for it too um where we had everyone in the room shuffle the deck and we had synthesized a question among ourselves um and then 
all picked a card and the most honestly the most magical thing that the time the most magical time was when we did this in toronto and it was uh 888 august 8th 2024 and i didn't realize that was like a portal day and we we pulled the card at 808 p.m and um it was just a very it was very special magical moment and there was the vibes were electric um but yeah lawrence what are you saying what do you what did you experience um well i definitely wanted to show that one of my best friends who is on sabbatical right now um got his deck right before he left and sent me this was a few months ago but he sent me a photo of him using the deck in the amazon like at the edge of the am or not at the edge in the amazon rainforest um staying in this like little um treehouse basically um and that definitely feels pretty magical to me just like the um and one of the cards he had pulled while there was the ten of flowers which has these little i don't actually know if they're feathers i can't remember in this moment i think those are corn i think they're corn corn great um uh in the moment we were like making sense of the colors of the flowers that were around him anyway so that's like one thing um i also had a friend send me a photo of him using the card to like distract his eight-year-old <laughs> um <laughs> which I was like you know what better thing to distract a young human who can read with than a tarot deck um particularly a tarot deck oriented around liberation um i have another friend of mine my upstairs neighbor rachel um who takes the deck with her many places, especially when she goes on retreats. She's in a lot of retreats this year. And so she will often take the deck and use it to pull a card for the retreat or a card for the day um, and have folks be able to check in with it. Um, she's doing, uh, well, let me not get into her business. She's doing a lot of, um, I would say, body-oriented liberation work. And so is really beautiful to have the deck yeah be able to frame um or give people a possible frame for how to move or how to think or how to feel that day how to make sense of what's happening that day <clears throat> um yeah and then I have lots of friends who just like use it in their daily practice um a lot of people who do grassroots organizing work or who do um frontline responder work and having them tell little stories to me about like how powerful or how useful the deck has been in moments of feeling stuck or confused or even excited and like curious about where to go um hearing those stories has been super sweet so yeah those are some things awesome also just to answer Elaine your question I think the question that you had what was the card was on the about the Toronto story um well first we had two questions that we asked in that small group one was um what is what as in this group in this moment right now can we all achieve and then the and then the second question what have we already achieved and for the what can we achieve card we pulled the dream and then the what can we already what have we already achieved we pulled the healer of vessels it was so gorgeous and the healer of vessels in their description also mentions like um collage work we were doing collaging that night it was like so it was so on the nose it was freaky there was a lot of it was special i will say that is the thing i've heard the most about the deck is like how ridiculously on the nose it is including for me today on this call <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, well, I invite other folks to share any other thoughts or last questions that they might have in the chat. Um, and uh, also Lawrence, like, you know, stop me if you have other things to add, but I do think that we could probably begin to wrap up soon. Um, and um I've enjoyed myself immensely in the last hour and a half. So I want to thank everyone um, for just the contributions you put in the chat and also Liberty and Lawrence for like 
just creating and facilitating and being part of the space. It's been really special. Yeah, I've had a ton of fun and I'm really grateful um, to be in this with you, Alicia. Thank you, Liberty, for hosting. Thanks to everybody who showed up and shared thoughts, how you got your first introduction to tarot or um, yeah, sharing about sharing your questions, reflections on the practice we did. Yeah, it's all been beautiful. And I see Nadia saying in the chat, Thank you for holding this. It will be fun to have a cohort like this. Hint, hint. <laughs> oh. Nadia, you know we have more phone calls to have since we, yeah, so we'll check in. <laughs> it was fantastic getting to hear a little bit about the process for the creation of the deck, which is just sounds so rich and incredible, um, that process of collaboration. Um, yeah, I, I really uh love that you shared so much of that today well folks it's been a fantastic session um huge appreciation to alicia and lawrence um for being here with us today thanks to all of y'all that came and um wow i've never seen a group of people stick it out so committedly for an event normally people are really like like popping in and out but um y'all really stuck with us uh and i know that's because you're having a good time. And um, yeah, uh, I hope everybody has a great rest of your day and we're able to connect again soon. Thanks so much, y'all. Take care. Bye. Bye.